DJ Next element to come in is our main beats. And I'm going to solo these. Let's have a listen. All right. So the main beats are coming from a drum rack, or rather a series of drum racks. So what I've done for my drums, and I, I use the same instrument, is I've developed my own custom instrument rack. And I have in the instrument rack drum racks for snares, kicks, hi-hats, and one-shots if I want to add in any vocal samples or atmospherics or anything like that. So each one, this basically allows me to have control over each of the groupings, kicks, snares, and hats, as a bus, more or less. And let's just take a look at what I'm doing here. So in the kick drum, I'm using three layers, um, mainly two layers actually, because one of them is that downward pitching sub. Okay, uh, so I'm using a bottom layer, and I'm using a top or punchy layer. And if we click on these individual sample pads here, you can see I have the filter on high pass 24, and it's cutting at 30 hertz because that those super even on the low kick those super sub frequency ranges you need to start trimming those out otherwise especially when you start adding compression and limiting and things like that it's really going to rob you of essential headroom in your track that'll allow you to make it loud so and then I'm taking an EQ8 and I'm rolling off the top end so I'm basically EQing the bottom kick and the top kick like puzzle pieces so they fit together so if we take a look at the top kick the punchy kick. I'm using the high pass 12 filter here basically to high pass everything above 83 Hertz on this top kick. So it's taking out the the low end the punchiness and the low end which is where that other sub kick sits. And then alright let's move to the snares. So we click on the snares drum rack you can see I have a, a variety of different samples in here, and that's because I'm not layering them all at the same time. My general rule with snares is kind of three, maybe even sometimes four layers. Because I write broken beat or break beat or, or glitch music, the snare is the primary percussion element. So I'm using really, really heavy and uh, layered snares and claps for that because it's uh, you need your snare to be super, super fat. So let's just listen to the samples that I am using. These, these are the ones in orange or muted. So you can see what I've done there is I've, again, used EQs to be able to help them fit together. So, for example, this one, the low snare, that's had a lot of the top end EQ'd out of it. And we have this top clap that takes up a lot of the high-end frequency range. And if we take a look at our drum programming, this is another thing I like about Ableton and drum racks is it actually labels your drums in the MIDI window. I used to use Native Instruments Battery and that was my one of my biggest complaints about it is that you'd be playing it on a piano key roll, right? And it would just say C3, D3, and you wouldn't be able to actually correspond it to what hit. But that's one of the beautiful things about Ableton is that if you put a sample in called low snare, it shows as low snare and you know you know what you're playing. So we take a look at the MIDI here, you can see that I am layering quite a few of the snares and claps together, but some of them are, you know, slightly slightly before and they're different hits. So let's just take a peek and see how that sounds. All right. So I'm just going to walk you through the effects I'm using on the snares now. So if we take a look at the individual hits, you can see a lot of these hits have lots of decay on them, and one of the things that I do with snares is I want them to pop, and I don't want that big long decay again, because that makes it sound kind of muddy, and it makes the percussion sound not as tight. So what I do is I, I take and I drag the sample's end point, which is this thing right here, and 
I drag the endpoint and I also put snap on so it snaps to a zero point crossing as far as amplitude is concerned so it doesn't click on you. So here we've basically, it's just under two, um, 200 milliseconds there as far as the length. And you can see I'm high passing it using an EQ and I'm also using a compressor on it. Similar settings on most of the other ones. This clap right here is one that I wanted to ride completely out, so I haven't closed the, I haven't backed off the um, the sample endpoint. Next layer up, we have this sample. And this one again is taking up a lot of the upper frequency range. I'm letting it ride for a little bit longer because I want it to be a longer element. I want it to accentuate um, so it's not playing on every beat. And on this one I have the dynamic tube adding some drive to the sample and I actually have just a little bit of bit crushing. On Ableton's bit crusher I never use the hard setting. I only use the soft setting and usually just a little bit. So it's giving the, the top clap some crunch to it and some distortion. On the low snare, I'm taking out the top end, and I'm taking out the bottom end, so it's just boxing in the frequency range. And again, I am using a compressor on it. All right, and then finally, on the percussion bus for the main beats, I'm using Isotope Trash. And this is a brilliant plugin. I've really only started learning it more recently because it is fairly complex and fairly deep, but it's really worthwhile if you have it. It's really worthwhile learning because uh, I actually was inspired to use it by the Glitch Mob because I started listening to their percussion and you know, on their forum on their Facebook fan page they were talking all about Isotope Trash and how they virtually use it on all their percussion and I can see why because it just makes really crunchy beats. So I'm two, using two things on Isotope Trash here. I'm using the compressor and I'm using the distortion. So let's just take a look here. So on Trash you can see I'm using the hard limit setting and I have some overdrive going on and I'm although it's a multi-band distortion plugin I'm only using one band so you could also click multi-band here and have it go into as many bands as you want three three different bands here so I'm using some distortion and now I'm also using some compression as you can see it's compressing really hard and the reason why I have it's a ratio of just over three here which is usually a pretty hard compression ratio if you're using limiting as well and the reason why I'm doing this is because this plugin has a wet dry slider and what that actually allows me to do is it allows me to take the percussion and do it's like a New York style or parallel style compression so I'm mixing a little bit of the wet signal in with the dry so I'm getting some really hard compression going alongside with the dry signal and the same thing with distortion now if we crank this all the way up to wet it would sound completely different which is not the effect I want but just so I can show you I'll play it here So I'm going to back off the wet dry slider and I'm just mixing some of the dry signal with the wet.